Now I've had a lot of motorbikes over the years and I don't ever remember owning a bike that didn't have a centre stand and it's something that over the years I've just taken for granted. Certainly back in the good old days all bikes were always fitted with centre stands and if they didn't also have a side stand they were usually an option. Now whether it's for cost reasons or it's just another way for manufacturers to get more money out of you by buying an accessory centre stand. There is a growing trend these days for bikes to be supplied just with a side stand. Now I know that this is necessary in some cases with underslung exhaust systems and belly pans. But to my mind for routine maintenance a centre stand is essential. When you're fitting parts to a bike, getting stuff lined up properly is a nightmare when the bike's leaned over to one side. And that weekly chain lubing is a nightmare with a side stand that takes far longer than it should do. And I've often wondered at the sanity of supplying a bike with just a side stand. Now the T100 came with a side stand only, and I have to say they do lean over at quite an acute angle on the older T100s. In fact, it is customary to put a piece of wood or something like that underneath the side stand foot just to sit the bike up a little bit. Now there are quite a lot of mods that need doing to this bike that ideally would at least require a centre stand, but having a look around at what's available for this bike, even scabby rusty ones on eBay have been offered for sale for somewhere around about £50. Now it's been in the back of my mind for quite some time that really I need some sort of bike lift or bike jack. As this channel progresses I find that I'm spending more and more time fitting parts to either of the two bikes. And the T100 especially has some conversions coming up with the suspension at both ends which quite simply cannot be done on a side stand. The plan is also to have the wheels rebuilt for something a little bit sexier than those that are fitted and that's going to take some time. The bike is going to need both wheels effectively off the ground and the bike supported while the wheels are sent away to be rebuilt. So I've spent several weeks having a look around to see what's available. Looking at the T100, the duplex frame is very narrow and having a look around the bike whilst I was trying to decide what the best option would be for this bike, I also decided that the exhaust pipes actually seem to protrude below the bottom frame rails. So it was gonna need something quite specialized for the job. There are many bike jacks and bike stands of all shapes, designs and sizes available that fit into many different price brackets. And the whole process did eventually become quite bewildering. So eventually I turned to an acquaintance of mine who is a lecturer at one of the local colleges on motorcycle mechanics to see what bike jacks they use. Now I was already aware that there are some quality and safety issues with some of the cheap Chinese stands which are very attractively priced but if it's got a safety issue or it doesn't work properly then it's not worth bothering with. And this acquaintance of mine suggested that I should really have a look at some of the Sealy products. And eventually the model I decided on was the MC4500 bike jack from Sealy. Now Sealy are a well known name in automotive equipment and tools, both for the DIY enthusiast and for the professional user. And they are well known for the quality. This is one of the larger platform scissor jacks on the market for lifting motorcycles. It's hydraulically operated and it's built like a tank with something like three millimeter thick steel construction all round. Now I had intended doing an unboxing and show you how to put this together but unfortunately due to its bulk and its weight it had pretty much unboxed itself while in transit to me and when it arrived I had to quickly put it together in the presence of the courier just to make sure that nothing was missing. Now assembly is actually quite minimal, all you basically have to do is fit the hydraulic ram and that's by means of a threaded bolt at the top and a pin with a sail clip at the bottom. And if you do get one of these or anything very similar, make sure that you lubricate those pivot points when you assemble it. I just used uh, my usual spray white PTFE calcium based grease which I use for all these kind of jobs. I know someone will probably tell me that's not the right grease for the job but I find it works okay I'm quite happy with it. 
Now this jack is rated to lift 500 kilograms and the great thing about it is it does lift the entire bike off the ground. But the main feature that I went for with this jack was the fact that it has individual frame support which can be tailored to fit the underside of your bike exactly and that's what I really wanted because of the narrow duplex frame. Now the whole jack is coated in what appears to be a reasonably durable red powder coating and the finishing on it is quite nice. For manoeuvrability the back of the jack features two larger wheels. These appear to be made of plastic. I'm not sure how durable they'll be but I'm sure that Sealy knows what they're doing and these will stand up to the job. At the front of the jack there's this curious sort of affair with a swivelling pair of feet. I did find these to be a bit of a nuisance. On one side it has a set of two metal casters and these are obviously to assist with maneuvering the jack around now if you lift the front of the jack up these automatically orientate the cells onto the other side with the casters facing upwards and i'm presuming that this is for safety so that the jack doesn't move around once the bike is supported although i should say that the instructions don't mention this feature at all so initially I didn't quite understand what the score was with these. Now I'm presuming that these casters are only intended for general moving around of the jack and they're not intended to be used while you're actually lifting a motorcycle. To assist with manoeuvrability it comes with a long handle that simply hooks onto the front of the jack. It's a simple design but I did find a slight drawback with this. You can only pull the jack with it, you can't push it which does hinder its manoeuvrability a little bit. Now the two support strips on the top of the jack are coated in a very durable, reasonably thick rubber. And this is so that you can use the jack to lift a bike without the frame supports. And as it happened, this turned out to be a godsend because when I measured this up, I made a little bit of a boo-boo. The frame supports themselves are also coated in some sort of thick rubber material and this is to protect the bottom of your frame rails from scratching. It does look very durable but I think in day to day use it would pay just to keep an eye on these and see how they're wearing. Now you have two separate controls, one for lifting and one for lowering the jack. The first is a foot pedal which looks a little bit like an old kickstart and this operates simply as a foot pump that you operate in order to lift the bike. Next to that is the lowering pedal and simply depressing this with your foot allows the bike to be lowered. Now this is pretty much the same sort of affair that you would find on any trolley jack and I did find that there was quite a reasonable amount of control allowed with the lowering pedal so that the bike doesn't drop too quickly. In addition to these, as a safety feature, on either side there is a linear ratchet system which engages onto a peg on the side of the scissor jack. Sometimes these drop down on their own as you're operating the lift, but often I found that you had to manually release them. As the jack lifts, these engage onto the peg at four different stages according to the height that you've raised the jack to. You should always ensure that these do engage while you're working on the bike because as I'm sure a lot of people know you should never trust a hydraulic system like this to hold the bike in place on a permanent basis or while you're working around the bike. In order to release them you simply pump the jack up a little bit higher so that the weight is taken off the pin you can then manually lift them out of the way and clip them onto the side of the frame of the trolley jack. Now one thing that I didn't take into account when I actually ordered this jack was the additional height that the frame supports added on to the closed height of the jack and rather embarrassingly I found once I'd fitted them even with them set at the lowest point I couldn't actually get the jack underneath the bike. However the measurements that I had taken in relation to the width of the jack etc did pay dividends here because I discovered that the exhaust downpipes actually are fractionally higher than the bottom rails of the bike frame and I did manage to find just one point where I could safely get the jack underneath the bike without causing any damage to anything where the bike was reasonably balanced. 
I think when all it is said and done, the size and the design of this jack with the additional flexibility of those frame supports means that this jack is going to be able to cater for a huge proportion of motorcycles on the road. Although with any product of this type, there are going to be incompatibilities with certain models. Now those more eagle-eyed among you will have realised that I didn't actually use any straps to hold the bike down once it was on the jack which I appreciate is a little bit naughty of me because I really should have done. The truth of the matter is um, I didn't realise that the straps didn't come with this jack, with a lot of jacks they do, but they don't with this model. So I had to order them separately and unfortunately come the day of filming they hadn't arrived so I had to go ahead without them. Rest assured the first time that I use this jack on a video where we need to get the bike off the ground I will go into detail of how to strap it down and make the bike safe. You must realise that with any bike being lifted on a system like this there is always going to be something of a compromise with the balance. In this case I found that the bike was a little bit back heavy because of where I'd had to situate the jack and I think you're going to come across this kind of thing quite frequently with lots of different models of bike. Although it would quite probably sit there quite happily for hour on end without any mishap, as soon as you start pulling and tugging and trying to undo fasteners on this bike, the chances are it could become unsettled and it could fall off the frame. And for that reason, it is essential that you strap the bike down. Now on the whole, I am very pleased with this jack. And I think for anybody that intends doing a lot of maintenance or like the T100 project that I'm doing, intends to do some customization work on a bike, something like this is a must. It's a good quality, heavy duty piece of equipment that I believe will give years of sterling service. And now that I've got it, rather than having to make do amend as I have done in the past, I can see it's going to be put to an awful lot of use. Now, price wise, the recommended retail price is round about £250, which, to be honest, I think is a little bit steep for what it is, especially when you consider the competition that's out there. But, if you shop around to all the independent tool stores, you can get it considerably cheaper. In actual fact, this costs just over £150. Since ordering it, I actually have found it for less than £150. The online market is very competitive and it is worth just doing a bit of research before you go ahead and make a purchase. For product identification purposes, I will leave a link in the video description on this video for Sealy's website and then it's up to you from there to do the research and find it at the best price. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've found it useful. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be back next Friday as usual, and until then, ride safely, and I'll see you soon.